Hello everyone, and welcome to a new adventure. We have received tragic news. It seems our family winery has fallen into disrepair and our cousin, who's in charge of it, can no longer take care of it. He's called us from distant lands and adventures to see if we can save our family legacy. We made shore in a dark oak forest where we very quickly ran into a cute little tribe of mushlings. Now I know some of you might be wondering, why do you have cat ears? First of all, it's very rude to ask someone that, but I will tell you. We are playing with the Origins mod, and in this one, we voted for the Origin Feline. This means we don't take fall damage, we can jump higher, and we don't make noise that would alert different predators. We also scare off creepers and can sleep slightly better in the dark. We have one less overall heart of health, and we can't mine natural blocks like stone without the help of strength potions. His message called us to a sunflower plane, so Simon and I hopped in a boat and made our way home. And so it was, for the first time in years, I set eyes on our family winery. It was not as I remembered it, but definitely just as beautiful. It seems like they sold off all of their stock, left the fields a complete mess, and all of the staff have left. So it's now our job to replant the field, brew all of our most famous recipes, and find staff. I started out by just surveying the area to see what was left and where we should start first. It seems like we needed an aging barrel, so that's going to be one of the first places before we can really brew anything. Thankfully though, our apple press was still effective and we got our first bit of apple mash. I went around back to see what was still left of our old garden and found that almost all of the flowers were gone, but we still had a few beehives. And we still had a few friends in our backyard grotto. It seems we're missing a few panes of glass and a whole lot of roof bits. We also have all of these annoying spider webs everywhere. Thankfully, the kitchen was still functional and most of the building was still intact. And here it is, our main mission, refilling all of these special wines. Once I had a good idea of the state of the property, I brought Simon inside so he wouldn't get hurt again. and went out to explore our field. It seems like one friend was left. A cute little ferret who quickly introduced himself to me as Steven. Unfortunately, none of the grape seeds were left and we had a whole lot of weeds in the garden. That night, I added one of our flowers to a flower pot in the bedroom as the first step towards making this place home. The morning began with some cleanup. I really wasn't liking these cobwebs all over the place, so I made a sword and got to work clearing them out. After that, we headed out to explore the surrounding area and gather some basic resources.
The first thing I was worried about was food. There was absolutely none on the property, and that was just not gonna do. Unfortunately, I was quite hungry, so the sheeps had to go. The ones with the pretty patterns are from a mod that adds in more variety of animals. None of them seem to drop meat, so I was a little frustrated about that and quickly got over it when we found our first batch of grape seeds. I also went through and gathered some regular seeds so we could plant a wheat field and not have to rely on meat as our only source of food. After that, I popped an oak tree. And gathered a bunch of sand so we could make glass bottles, wine bottles, and glass panes. While I cooked up our mutton, I got to work cleaning out the cobwebs in the kitchen. I figured fish would also be a great source of food, so I headed out to the river to grab us some raw salmon, and I was also looking for squid. The panes on the winery were black glass, so I needed black dye from their ink sacks. I don't know if it's because of one of the creatures mods that adds in the koi fish or what, but I did not find a single squid this entire playthrough. On a side note, water is unbelievably beautiful with this shader. I was curious to test out our soft pause ability as a feline, so I threw down some water so we'd have a way back up and jump to the bottom. This is an incredibly convenient ability. Please go ahead and bully me for mining iron with a wooden pick. I absolutely should know better by now. Thankfully, we had a couple bottles of Mojang Noir, which gave us a strength ability, so I was able to mine out some stone and make a couple of picks. The wine's effects did not last long, and we only had three bottles, so I had to be very careful to make sure we could get everything we needed, like coal and iron, before we ran out of the ability to mine. To be clear, you can mine ores just fine, it's just the stone which often is in the way of the ores that you're not able to. Back home, I made an aging barrel with some of the materials we had collected and set it up next to our apple press. Afterwards, I got to work planting those seeds we had found in our garden. I decided to follow a system of white seeds on the left and red seeds on the right, so it's easy to keep track of how much we have and what is where. I then went ahead and planted our wheat seeds so we could get to work on a renewable food source. Okay. 
Apple mash in hand, I brewed our first wine or drink, which was just apple juice. Then with that apple juice and some sugar, I made apple cider. And so we had our first two additions to the wall. Another basic ingredient we needed was honey, so I got to work making our beehives harvestable and revamping our garden area. I'm not really sure why I got the Monster Hunter achievement here with this spider, and not with the zombie that we had dealt with earlier. But anyways, I went through and lured a few more bees down into our garden, so our hives would produce honey a little bit faster. By this time, we had some mature grapes ready to harvest from the vine. I'm obsessed with this mod. It is so much fun. The different steps are simple, but really makes it feel like an experience of making wine. With what we had gathered, we were able to make bottles of both red, magnetic, and noir wine. We had also made mead earlier with some of the honey that we had collected. The next day we also made the apple wine with some apple juice and honey. I went out to find our next grape type in a savanna, and thankfully found one very close to a village. The loot in this village was really interesting, and so were some of the new job types, like this hunter or the florist. I found our red grape seeds pretty quickly when I was done with the village, but the white ones were a bit harder to spot. I find that's kind of a theme overall with the different types of berries, that the white ones are just... I don't know if they're more rare, but they're harder for me to find. Mm. 
Thankfully, we did still spot some. And I think it's really cool how the different types of berries have different shapes. The use of the azalea bush model here is so clever. Because I hadn't gathered enough seeds to fill up our stocks here, I had to go ahead and cut down some of the bushes once they were grown and use the seeds that we get from them. I also found you can use the watering can like you would bone meal. It does eventually run out of durability, so it'll break if you use it too much. But I think it's a really neat addition to the tools that we have available in the game. With those new types of seeds, we were able to make Clark, Aegis, and Kelp Wine. We also had Mojang Noir now, which meant mining would be a little bit easier. Next, I headed out to a jungle to find our jungle grapes. Being a feline and not taking fall damage definitely made the jungle more enjoyable to traverse. I was here for a very, very long time before I was able to find any white grapes. Which, if you've watched me at all, you know that I hate being in the jungle, and so does my PC. So I made a point to pop some trees while I was here so we wouldn't have to come back to the logs. Unlike the last two, which grow as bushes, these graves actually grow as vines, which again, is just such a neat touch. I really adore how creative the creator of this mod is. Now here, I was a bit stupid with how I handled the seeds. I figured the vines would be broken and drop more seeds, and unfortunately, after a while, I ended up with none. I think I just kept trying to harvest them too soon, since it was hard for me to see the different states of the block. But thankfully, another neat addition is you can actually turn grapes back into seeds, so we did not have to go back to the jungle. You can put about six grapes into each container, and then you need to jump on them to turn them into juice. You collect the juice in wine bottles, which is made by crafting four glass bottles, and you can use the different types of juice to make different types of wine. With these new types of grapes, we were able to make Strad, Malohi, and Stall wine. I went ahead and made a list of the different things we needed to make the rest of the types of wine. A lot of them were pretty simple, but some ingredients were a bit rarer than others. Day 15 began with an adventure. At this point, I decided I wanted to take a break from winemaking and get to work on revamping the winery itself. This meant finding dark oak wood. Fortunately, as I was adventuring, I did run into a taiga and figured we could grab the taiga grapes on our way. These, however, were plain grapes, and I actually had a really hard time locating any taiga seeds at all. While I was exploring, I came across this what I'm guessing is a temple. 
and ended up grabbing a lot of the dark oak stairs from here for our roofing. I also went through and looted the available chests, which gave us lots of redstone items and a minecart. I had stopped the recording to figure out why I was getting that message and forgot to re-record when I came back, so we used those stairs to cover in the roof holes. We had also managed to brew the Joe Special and the Villager Fright wine. And I also put regular glass panes in with the black glass since I just wasn't able to find any squids. I made this into a sort of pattern so it would look deliberate. One of the things that we were missing for most of the rest of the recipes were cherries. Thankfully, there were a few cherry trees just scattered across this plains. With the building revamped and us doing so well collecting all of the different wines, I got to work thinking about what we could do to bring on staff. This led me to collecting some pumpkins. I also went out and grabbed the gunpowder that we were missing. Creepers being afraid of us made this so easy. So a little thing about me, when I was a kid, we used to go out to the beach all the time and there's this fruit stand halfway between that has really grown to be more than just a fruit stand. One of the things that they have there is a cute little kitty train that you can ride around the property. I thought this would be the perfect thing to add here since we'd found all of these rail tracks and a minecart. So as I mentioned, I thought it'd be really cute to set up this little kitty rail here as an attraction for the guests. This first idea worked well enough, I mean it went around the tracks just fine, but there was no stop and start feature, so I had to come up with a better way to lay out these tracks. For now, I put everything away and left that to come back to later. In the morning, I got to work bringing on staff. Which of course meant these adorable hay golems. These little guys are more than just cute. They'll actually harvest the crops for us, and if you shift click on them, you can tell them where to drop them. I don't know that they actually did this because I told them all to drop them in that chest, and I don't think I've seen any actually added there, so they might just be eating the grapes. But they're cute enough that that's okay. They will cease to exist after about seven in-game days, so to keep them around, you need to feed them wheat. But to keep them happy, you have to feed them apples. Look at them, that's just so cute! 
えてたらごめんなさい。After our last adventure, we were finally able to make Creeper Crush and Cherry Wine. We had a visitor on the property today, but he didn't really have anything I was interested in buying. Thankfully for him, I already had a lead. The last time we were here, our inventory was filled up from that temple, so we didn't actually get a chance to find any taiga seeds. And despite finding snowberries pretty quickly, it took me a long time to actually find the taiga groups. What's interesting about these ones is they actually work the same to snowberries in that if you try to step in a bush, you will take damage. I used our nature's compass to see if I could find any snow. It turned out to not really be necessary since I was pretty close to some alps. I grabbed the snowballs we needed to make some eyes wine, and found that Lady Luck was entirely on our side. Directly behind us was a massive crater that actually led straight to some glowberries, one of the last things we were missing. Once again, taking advantage of that feline ability to not take damage from falls, I jumped straight down. This was not necessarily a good idea. Not taking damage from falls does not mean I did not take damage, and I seem to have forgotten this whole peaceful time revamping this cute, cozy little winery that there are dangerous creatures in this game. We actually came across a zombie miner, which I thought was so, so cute, but he's still a zombie, so we got out of there pretty quick. However, I was not going to leave empty-handed. While down here, I made a point to gather some moss so we could use it as decorations. We were also incredibly lucky and ended up finding not one, but two axolotls. I immediately brought them back to our backyard flower where they seemed pretty happy. I was a little worried there may have been like an open cave down here they would escape through, but thankfully this whole thing seemed to be pretty enclosed. With the taiga seeds planted, we had successfully found all of the different types of fruits. However, because of my setup here, it was really dangerous to walk between these to try to harvest them. I thought this would be sufficient, but I was still taking damage on either side. So instead, I went with a floating walkway kind of design where you jump between them and just harvest them and grab them on the easy sides.
Next, we went ahead and brewed some ice wine, Praetorian, and Bolvar wine. It had rained through the night, which meant we woke up to this beautiful rainbow over the vineyard. We were very close to finish with only maybe two or three wines to add. I decided it was finally time to get together my winemaker outfit, which meant we needed red dye and blue dye. I also gathered some of the larger flowers to fill up the big pots that we had around the property. I added our Miss Lilith, Sunkissed, and Solaris wine to the wall, and that completed all of the recipes that we needed to brew. But we're not done yet. Finally feeling worthy of the mantle, I donned our winemaker outfit and got to work filling in the final details. I wanted to see which wines would actually fit into these cabinets. It seemed to be just the Mojang Noir, the Noir, the Red Wine, and the Boulevard Wine. The special bottles really were not working for me. I don't know if I just wasn't doing it right, but that was something I thought was kind of odd. I thought it'd be cool if we could actually put whatever ones we would like in these displays. However, from a practical standpoint, some of the bottles are kind of oddly shaped, so it makes sense that we wouldn't be able to. I went ahead and brewed up a whole bunch of the wines that did fit into the cabinets, just that way we could kind of fill them in and make the place look a little bit more complete. Once I was done brewing, I realized I had forgotten to feed our little friends for a while, and they were all pretty grouchy about it. Thankfully, one apple in and we'd earned their forgiveness. Look at him! I think this is something that Minecraft is desperately lacking. Sure, we have villagers, but it just feels empty. With our stroll golems fed, I got to work creating our train conductor.
I thought if I set it up this way so the redstone came from a pulse of a button, the train would be a little bit more manageable. Unfortunately, I did not get in fast enough. I did get it to work once, which was really fun, but we still had the issue of it needing to be lined up just perfectly at just the right time, so I was getting a little frustrated here. Redstone is really not my thing, and I wasn't understanding why this just was not working how I wanted. And of course it worked when I was out of the car. <laughs> On top of that, he got inside of my train. But I did let him have the train because he looked very cute inside of it. After that, I went ahead and filled in these cabinets with all of the wines that would fit. I feel like these wine racks should be functional. Again, I don't know if I just wasn't approaching it correctly, but I could not get anything to go inside of them. Not even the regular wines that fit in these other shelves. And that was my adventure with the Let's Do Vinery mod. I am completely obsessed. There is also a bakery version, so best believe I will be doing that as well. For anyone who's interested, I do have the unrevamped version of this world, so the way that we first approached the vinery available on my Ko-Fi for free, and the mods available to download within that folder along with it. So you don't need to find anything, it's all there with some basic instructions for how to get it going. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to any of you that have supported me on Ko-Fi, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.